Welcome back. Today we are going to use our authentication PGP key, to remotely access another computer in our own local network. SSH stands for, Secure, Shell. SSH is a communications protocol that will allow you to access, control, and modify, a remote server over the internet. Its most important feature, is that the communication between computers, is encrypted, meaning that, it is suitable for use on insecure networks. The computer starting an SSH connection we will call, the client, and the computer being accessed, we will call, the server. When you SSH into a remote computer, directly from your terminal window, you are effectively logging into that computer. We will do that, using two authentication methods. Password authentication, and public key cryptography with the PGP key for authentication, from our YubiKey. So, today I am using two computers. My everyday Linux Ubuntu, which I will use to start SSH connections. And a second machine, playing the role of the server. This computer should run, ideally, Linux Ubuntu as well. In my case, I will use a Raspberry Pi with a freshly installed Linux Ubuntu Server OS. An Ubuntu server is basically a lightweight Ubuntu without a desktop, or a graphical interface. It is optimized to be controlled remotely. But you can use a regular Ubuntu if you like. Just connect both computers on the same local network. And let's start with the server side. I'm in Linux Ubuntu server, in a Raspberry Pi with a screen and a keyboard connected. I will log in as the default user. Ubuntu. I am in. Let's check that I am indeed on an Ubuntu OS, in a Raspberry Pi. So. If I want to SSH into this computer, I have to make sure that the OpenSSH server package is installed. I already have it. It might be different for you. Just install it by typing, sudo apt install OpenSSH server. When you do, make sure that you have an SSH configuration file situated at etc. ssh You may, or may not have, an ssh data directory in your home. I happen to have one, but the only file in there, authorized keys, is empty. I could delete the whole data directory, and it wouldn't make any difference. So, we only need to know one more thing about this machine, to be able to SSH into it. It's IP. 192.168.1.118 I will log out, and keep the server running, while I move on, to my regular Ubuntu. Now I'm in the client computer. Ubuntu Desktop. Most Linux distributions come with the SSH client software already installed. But I probably won't have the server package, which is fine because I don't need it. Let's check. I probably won't have an SSH directory either. So, we are ready to SSH into our server. Let me first open a new terminal window. The SSH configuration file that I showed you before, in my server, is set by default to accept connections using password authentication. For now, I only need to know the login password for the user, Ubuntu to get in. Type SSH followed by your user at symbol hostname. In our case, 
Ubuntu, at, 192.168.1.118. If this is the first time you connect to this server, type, yes. And now, type the login password for the user, Ubuntu. And we are in. Notice the bash prompt in your shell. User Ubuntu, at, Ubuntu. You are now, remotely controlling the Raspberry Pi machine where I logged in, at the beginning of this tutorial. Anything I could do, then and there, I can do here, from another machine. Create files, in my home. Update the system, if I have permissions for it. Install new software. You get the idea. The purpose of having two terminal windows open side by side is for you to realize how powerful SSH is. You have simultaneous access to two computers. Both of these machines are physically next to you, but eventually you will be able to do this with computers anywhere in the world. How cool is that? Let's place each terminal in its own workspace so we can have a better view. It is important for you to know where Linux keeps its logs for authentication processes. In Ubuntu, you will find them at var log. Let's take a look at the server's logs. We are only interested in the SSH process output. In the last two lines, you can see a successful login attempt from this IP which belongs to my client Ubuntu desktop sitting on this machine. Now let's terminate the SSH connection, and start a new one. You can disconnect, either typing, exit, log out, or just pressing, Control D. Let's look at the logs again. Please, learn to read this output. It is essential that you can identify, successful, and unsuccessful login attempts, as well as disconnections. That is so cool, isn't it? But password authentication is not a smart way of SSHing into a computer. Even if you have a strong, long password, it can be brute forced, and you have to type it on a keyboard, or paste it into a terminal. To mitigate all these security risks, we are going to use public key cryptography. The server side will hold our public key, and we log in by proving ownership of the secret key that derived it. That private key, you guessed it, is our PGP key for authentication, sitting safely on our YubiKey. key. But it's not that simple. Even though our PGP keys, and SSH keys, are both RSA keys, they are stored in different formats. The good news is, that the GPG agent can provide properly formatted keys that the SSH process understands. But we will have to use some trickery to make that happen. The environment variable SSH auth SOC contains the path of the Unix file socket that the SSH agent uses for communication with other processes. Since GPG is going to be handling authentication requests from SSH, that variable should be overwritten with the GPG socket file name that deals with SSH. The following command will print to screen a list of directories and file sockets that the GPG agent uses. That's the one. 
If we append it to the previous command, we'll get the file socket as its output. Now I will overwrite the SSH auth sock variable. Let's check that the variable has been updated. So, tldr. If I add the following line to my bash rc file, I will make sure that every time I log in as my current user, all programs and shells will be aware of the change. Let's add a comment. Done. The UB key is SSH ready. Now let's set up the server for public key authentication. The following command will enable logins on a remote machine. It is the easiest way of sending a public key to a server that has password authentication enabled. This command basically SSHs into the given server and copies our public key into the file authorized keys at its ssh data directory let's check at our server please remember that this file was empty when we first encountered it the command ssh copy id put our public key here as i said you will only be able to do this if the server has password authentication enabled if it doesn't you need to have physical access to the server to edit this file manually, or to provide your public key to whoever manages the server. So now let's go back to our Ubuntu client, and try to SSH into the server using our YubiKey. It works. I will type my PIN and unlock the YubiKey. Now the UB key is flashing. I need to touch it. I have successfully SSH'd into the server, using my PGP authentication key, from my UB key. And by the way, the last field in our entry to the authorized keys file, is just a descriptor. If you like, you can change it, and avoid giving away the serial number of your UB key. Okay. Now, disconnect. Remove your YubiKey from the USB port, and SSH back in. Notice that we still can SSH in, via password authentication. We want to change that, and make authentication by public key, the only allowed method of logging in. So, type your password and let's look at the logs. Notice that the previous SSH session, was established using public key authentication. So let's disable password authentication for SSH, in the configuration file that I showed you before. At, etc, SSH. Find the line that reads, password authentication, and change it to, no. Save and exit. Now restart the SSH daemon, to apply the changes. Whenever I change some authentication parameter, 
it is very important to keep an SSH connection going, while I try to log back in, from another shell in a different terminal window. You don't want to lock yourself out from the server, if you did something wrong. So, don't disconnect until you are confident that the new changes work, or you will lose access. You'll have noticed that right now, I have, two, independent SSH connections to the server. I will disconnect one of them, and try logging in, without my YubiKey. I can't. Password authentication has been successfully disabled. Now I'll insert my YubiKey, and try again. It works. I'll unlock it, and then touch it. So there you have it. You can now use the authentication PGP key, stored in your YubiKey, to SSH into a server, from any computer you like. How cool is that? Next time we will leave our local network. I will teach you how to SSH into a server anywhere in the world. Over a tour.